So, the last time we were talking about the Pine Phone and our first week experiences with it. So, first of all, oh, wow. Okay, this this desk is kind of messy, but let's let's go over what I got here for a second. I actually have another project here, and I'm not entirely certain you'll be interested in me making it, but I've got the makings for a fume extractor here that I 3D printed. And if you're interested in, in seeing me build that, go ahead and leave a comment. I'd like to know if you want to do that. Otherwise, I might just do a blog post on it. Likewise, I also have been working on making a Go board, which is a board game that is completely 3D printed. I'm not entirely certain if you're really interested in that either, but you know, I want to show it off for a couple minutes before I actually move on with the pine foam stuff. Even have the stones here. This is not chocolate, by the way, although everybody seems to think it is chocolate, probably because it looks browner on the camera than in person. In person, it definitely looks kind of coppery and not chocolatey. I don't know. Cameras are weird. Anyways, we don't need any of this stuff because no one here is, is watching this video for that or my messy desk. Everyone wants to know what's going on with the Pine Phone. So it's been two weeks now since I've got the Pine Phone Pro, and I've had a few interesting experiences with it. Last time I did mention that we actually got it to work and we had no issues with it. In the last week, I actually have had a little bit more fun, and one particular commenter suggested I should try out Plasma Mobile instead of the normal Fosh that I'm used to. And I decided, what the hey, I'll go ahead and do that. So I decided to, and the funny thing is, I actually didn't start by installing this. There's a bit of a story here. What happened is, I decided to install a U-Boot alternative bootloader on the PinePhone Pro called Towboot. Now, Towboot has an interesting problem that it's supposed to generally help with things like suspend and resume, and it's supposed to make the power utilization a little bit better and expose some of the better features of the phone. Now, you'll remember when I got this PinePhone Pro, the phone wouldn't boot at all. It would have a boot loop. We charged the battery and it still wouldn't boot off of the EMMC because something in it was corrupted. As soon as I installed Towboot, the system booted up entirely correctly. And now we had Plasma Mobile on here. And then I was a silly fool and decided to actually try updating it. That failed entirely. I tried updating it using the command line, and I completely trashed the internal operating system again. Now, interesting side note, while I was working on this, I actually found out that the keyboard stopped working. And I wasn't sure if this was a hardware fault or if this actually was something to do with Plasma Mobile. The story turned out to be a lot more interesting than I expected. When I rebooted this phone into Fosh, I found out the keyboard still didn't work. On a previous installation on an unmodified SD card where it was working just one boot before. That was really confusing. I uh, unplugged the, uh, the phone from the keyboard. I plugged it back in. I rebooted it. I re-imaged the internal EMMC with a version of Plasma Mobile that was fresh and not screwed up because the updates got really corrupted. And still the keyboard wouldn't work. But as you can see now, the keyboard does work. So what in the heck happened? You know, if I can get my pin number correct. There we go. So what happened? What happened was actually Towboot happened. So Towboot seems to have a conflict with every operating system that I installed here. And this is um, the Dantix 
uh, distribution of Arch Linux, and I have both the Fosh and also the Plasma Mobile version on here, one on EMMC and one on the SD card. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why the keyboard just was not working. Well, after a little bit of messing around and getting things to work, I actually did find out what the problem was. The problem was a lot more interesting than I expected. Apparently, both of the operating systems on this device, so on the EMMC and on the, uh, on the SD card, also have regular vanilla U-Boot installed. When you have Toboot installed, it installs to the SPI on the phone, which is actually a completely separate storage device that I didn't even know existed because the original Pine phone didn't have it. The Pine phone Pro, however, does have the SPI boot sector on it. So it's a completely different storage section with a, its own limitation of memory. And that actually made a difference. So it would boot off of that, and then it would try to chain to U-boot on the next OS. And for some odd reason, this resulted in a conflict that caused the keyboard to stop working. As soon as I actually zero-bited both, uh, both the bootloader on the EMMC and on the SD card and rebooted, the keyboard would work just fine. Let me deal with that for a second. There we go. Now we're not going to have that problem. Sorry about that. So, yeah, really weird and interesting experience there that I just simply did not expect to have. So anyways, let's talk about Plasma Mobile. When I first reviewed the Pine phone when it came out way back in the Braveheart days, I was not entirely impressed with Plasma Mobile. It felt slow, it felt like it inherited too many desktopisms, and it was generally just not a very good fit. I just, I didn't like it. It didn't feel baked, in other words. It's still a little unbaked in the middle. In the intervening years, Plasma Mobile has gotten really, really good. Plasma Mobile has gotten a lot better than it used to be. In fact, now, it's a much better operating system than Fosh actually currently is, particularly on the Pine Phone and Pine Phone keyboard, where you're going to use it horizontally most of the time. Fosh has a problem with horizontal modes. It actually takes up a lot of dead space in the UI. There's a bar at the bottom to open up the drawer. There's a bar at the top, which shows you the status and the time. And Plasma Mobile has a slightly different, more Android-like strategy where the bar stays along the bottom edge of the screen no matter what orientation you flip the phone in. So this is actually good because it means that it preserves more of that restricted vertical space when working in landscape mode. Other than that, the experience has actually been pretty good. The, uh, the applications are actually a lot faster now. The notifications don't feel weird and out of place. Things feel generally fairly snappy and honestly not bad. Oh right, this thing is still in, uh, in airplane mode because I was charging it. That's another interesting side note. Charging this in the keyboard case is tedious. The problem is that the keyboard case doesn't charge very quickly, no matter what power source you plug into on the uh, plug into for the keyboard. You could shove 65 watts in here, and you're still only getting 500 milliamps to the phone, and it takes forever to charge. It's still a problem, and it's, quite frankly, the biggest frustration with this device at this particular moment. You might want to, if you're considering getting the Pine Phone Pro, just not getting the keyboard yet. I know that Meiji is actually working on a new uh, keyboard hardware manager 
for the Pine Phone Pro that's going to be able to resolve some of these issues, enable fast charging, and a whole bunch of other stuff that would generally improve the experience. But it's not out yet, and it's not in Pine Phone Linux distributions yet. So you might want to wait just a little bit until that comes out. That will probably help somewhat. But anyways, back to Plasma Mobile. Um, the Drop-down notification is a lot better now than it used to be. I'm a lot happier with how this worked. It feels a little bit more to my experience, a normal experience. I'm really trying to keep that ring light from reflecting back into the camera. I'm so sorry. I'm limited by my setup here. It's not very good. It's just a cheap webcam. I'm trying, okay? <laughs> But beyond that, it's actually gotten fairly good. UI responsiveness is generally fairly snappy. Angelfish is actually not too bad either. I mean, right now it's not connected because it's still in airplane mode. Stop that. Stop that. Connect. Connect, darn you. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't want to now. It, it's, it's camera shy. That's probably what it is. Anyways, generally I've had fairly good experiences with this, but the problem is that the application loadout on Plasma Mobile compared to Fosh just does not feel very good right now. There's no utility manager here to show you what your general memory consumption is out of the box, at least on this distribution. Like I said, I unfortunately damaged the internal out-of-the-box OS beyond repair, and I had to re-image the EMMC. But afterwards, it worked pretty well. Of course, the camera doesn't work. That's still a problem with, uh, with the Pine Phone Pro. It's a different camera chipset. It's okay. Um, one thing that is nice is that the bar is actually more useful than Fosh. You don't have to do two different operations to close an application. You can just hit the X button on the bottom. Again, if your fingers aren't cold. Oh, also the camera's making it, uh, the camera app is making it slow. <laughs> uh, another thing that was a little bit frustrating that I've had with this is actually NeoChat. I actually have a matrix server that I chat with people on and I actually can't get it to connect using NeoChat because my username also has an at symbol in it. And you are not given the option to specify the server separate from your username in NeoChat. So I can't use NeoChat to log into my matrix instance at all with this. I'd have to install a different one. And the only other one that's available within the store is Fractal. And I know Fractal works, but Fractal is GNOME, and I was trying to do everything KDE this week, and I was just, ah, uh, just fist shaking at it because I just could not get that to work. It was very frustrating. Uh, likewise, there's no good um, mobile friendly, I need to qualify that, mobile friendly uh, social media application. You can install Chalkock, um, if I'm saying that correctly perfectly fine from the Discover store. However, it only shows up in the desktop mode. So you get drop-down windows and you get a side panel, which takes up way too much space, and it's practically unusable. Chalkock is just not mobile friendly. And it's really frustrating because the only other application which has any success of doing that on the Pine phone is Clawbird which is GNOME-based, so that's kind of a problem. So generally, the thing that's frustrating with uh, me with Plasma Mobile isn't the operating system ex uh, experience itself. It's, it's the applications. Um, even Firefox has a problem where it doesn't want to lay out correctly on the same screen. You'll actually see it, barely, that it's off-center and cut off. But if I rotate it, and if I can get the keyboard out of the way, because sometimes that becomes a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That's another problem. When the keyboard shows up, the, the virtual keyboard shows up in portrait mode, uh, landscape mode, excuse me, there's no way to hide it because it comes above the bar. Just, just, ah! <sighs> Little frustrations like that. And again, Firefox has the title bar, like a desktop application. It has all of the stuff on the top instead of the bottom, like a desktop application. It takes up so much room and only barely works in landscape form. And it doesn't really work at all in portrait mode. And I don't understand why this is a problem because they're both from the same production team. I'm not sure if this is, maybe it's a KDE problem or something, but that's really been frustrating. And it means that I have to end up using Angelfish all the time. And Angelfish is not terrible as a browser, but, you know, it doesn't have the password integration that I'm used to, which means I have to manually enter all the passwords, which is a frustration because there's a password manager involved and the care and the passwords are very, very long and very complex. And uh, it's just really frustrating. The day-to-day -day user experience has frustrations. And the sad part is the orientation of the bar and the better utilization of screen space that Plasma Mobile offers out of the box is generally just a bit better, almost worth it. But it's all of this other stuff, which is just making it very frustrating. Now, it's possible that all of this will get solved in time and Chalkock will have a proper mobile-friendly version. But Plasma has had this issue where ever since KDE 4, they were very desktop focused. And it almost feels like GNOME is starting to get a little bit ahead of it in terms of how mobile friendly it is because GNOME now has a responsive application API that allows it to make more mobile friendly applications with the same uh, application set without making a special distribution for phones. And that's been very nice, but it doesn't feel like KDE is there yet. It, it feels like it's missing that. So, yeah, I mean, I want to like Plasma Mobile, but I'm, I'm, it, it's just frustrating me. Anyways, let's reboot. <laughs> <laughs> I found out a neat little trick with U-Boot that wasn't very well documented. If I can get the screen to come on, back on, there we go. Come on. Are you just unhappy now? The phone seems to be unhappy. Sometimes the screen doesn't want to respond. <sighs> I don't know why it does that. Please? Okay, now the screen wants to respond. <sighs> okay, so we reboot the phone. And you'll see that it's starting off. Now watch for the LED, okay? This phone, once it finally shuts off, is going to flash this LED red. And if I leave it alone, it will boot to the EMMC because the PinePhone Pro is set to boot to the EMMC by default. So let's just give this a minute. I still have to print off a lot of these stones. Oh, there it goes, it's red. Hold down the volume down button. And then watch that light. It's aqua now. You'll see the same Arch Linux mobile boot screen because, again, both, my, both operating systems on this phone are from the same distribution team. So they have the same bootloader. But watch this neat little trick. I'll just sit here and watch it. Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Ha <laughs> ha That's not KDE anymore. That's Fosh. Everyone knows my unlock code because it's still the default one out of the screen. And I still can't type it in correctly. So, 
So yeah, you can literally dual boat a Pine phone and then hold down the volume down in order to switch operating systems. Isn't that cool? How many phones can you dual boot? You can dual boot this one. Okay, that's all for this time. I'm Socket Wench. We've learned together. See you next time.